The first call of Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc anime has just wrapped up by releasing two episodes yesterday as we continue with the Everything But The Rain flashback which concludes within episode 12 and episode 13 continues by covering the entirety of the Blade Is Me material from the manga. Episode 12 is titled Everything But The Rain June Truth and it covers material from the halfway point of chapter 533 all the way to the end of chapter 537. It spans a total of four and a half chapters and the the final episode of the first part of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime adapts chapters 538 to chapter 542, covering a total of 5 chapters worth of manga material. Now this week we have 9.5 chapters adapted which wraps up the first core of the anime which in total adapts 62 chapters of the manga into 13 episodes of anime. So I'll start by comparing the events of episode 12 to the manga and as always I'll refrain from talking about scenes which are one to one adapted from the manga and I'll solely focus on what's been cut, changed and added to the anime. We begin episode 12 with the second half of chapter 533 which is adapted before the intro song. We see Ishin reporting his recent visit to the world of the living during a captain's meeting and Masaki showing holification symptoms towards the end of the chapter which coincidentally Urahara notices when he was conveniently walking past her. Now this material is pretty faithful to the manga aside from Masaki's discussion with her friends which is cut down significantly but the anime still ends up conveying the general gist of what they were talking about as it's just her friends teasing Masaki about living with Ryuken. After the intro sequence, two pages from the start of chapter 534 are cut from the anime. Now this involves Rangiku reading a note left behind from Ishin telling her to make an excuse in order to explain to the head captain why he has left for the world of the living again. She of course isn't very happy about this as she complains about his lackadaisical attitude towards his job. After Ishin appears and kills the hollow that was about to attack Ryuken and Masaki, a gag panel is cut from the anime where Ishin tells Ryuken that there is no need to thank him as he doesn't accept thank yous from dudes. The halfway point of episode 12 adapts up to the end of chapter 534 as we begin the following chapter with Urahara's explanation of how to reverse Masaki's holification. Urahara's explanation of holification and soul suicide is streamlined within the anime and it's also rephrased slightly to avoid any confusion and it seems like this was definitely a script alteration made by Kubo as the wording is very meticulously rearranged in order to explain what holification is exactly, what was the purpose behind it and why it was ultimately deemed too dangerous to continue researching. Now because Urahara speaks about an uncontrollable monster being formed and the end result of holification being soul suicide, he ends up conveying all of the talking points without any interruption. This is a little different from the manga where a reference is made to a Quincy being holified which is outside of the original purpose of holification. But Urahara doesn't mention this until later on in the anime. Instead he combines all the talking points together and he speaks about soul suicide a little earlier than in the manga. Urahara during an anime only scene explains that currently Masaki is a hybrid of a Quincy and a Hollow. So in order to counter this, she needs somebody who is a hybrid of a Shinigami and a human in order to tip the balance the other way and to restore the balance of her soul. Now this I think is better explained within the anime and it's thanks to these additions that I made to the script. Another big addition is made to Urahara's wording as he explains that the hollow white will be passed down to Masaki's descendants. In the manga it seemed like this was limited to just Masaki but the anime elaborates and helps us to understand how Ichigo inherits the hollow from her. Now while Ishin is in the special Gigai he will be unable to use his powers as this spiritual pressure will be used to counter and hold back the hollow. When Ishin appears within Masaki's inner world to protect her the anime heavily avoids showing any of Masaki's nudity that is present within the manga. Additionally, a gag panel is also cut from the start of chapter 536 after Ishin warns the Hollow that he won't let it lay a finger on Masaki. In the manga, he jokes by commenting on the Hollow's confused expression, since the Hollow would have been confused by Ishin's remark since it doesn't have a body. After landing the Getsuka Tensho against the Hollow, a few gag panels are cut from the anime where Masaki and Ishin interact. Now, some of these gag lines are instead rearranged and added to Masaki while she is talking in her sleep after Ishin links their souls together. Now, Another big cut that is made here is to Masaki's assets which are fully on display within the manga but they don't end up making it 
to the anime which is pretty disappointing to some people out there. When Ishin narrates what had happened after saving Masaki, a panel is cut from the anime which explains that it was Ryuken's decision to have Masaki leave the Ishida family, as it was his way of letting go of her. When Ishin speaks about Masaki being like the sun, we get some incredible anime only visuals that emphasize Ishin's explanation, as it helps us to understand how she was the center of his world. Episode 12 cuts to the credits after adapting all the way up to the end of chapter 536. After the end credits, we do get a lengthy post credit scene which adapts all of chapter 537 aside from the last few pages which are left for the end of episode 13. Now during the explanation of how Masaki had died, we see a lot of amazing anime only visuals that help us to understand Ishin's explanation. We get to see new visuals of Masaki battling the Grand Fisher, as well as Ryuken reading Soken Ishida's book on the Quincy history, where he learns about the sealed Quincy King. Now some panels of Ishin explaining why he didn't go to help Masaki are cut from the anime, as some of the dialogue here is rearranged in comparison to the manga, and it's streamlined into the post credit scene. Now this includes Ishin asking Ichigo if he knows about what had happened to Uryu's mother, and Ichigo says that Uryu isn't the type to talk about his family. Now this isn't included because later on Ishin speaks about Osvalen, and how Katagiri had died 3 months after Masaki. Episode 12 wraps up with Ichigo ready to return to the Soul Society as episode 13 continues on by adapting chapter 538 of the manga. Before the opening song, we see Ichigo return to Nimaya's palace, but the explanation where Mira speaks about Ichigo being sent home with the intention of having him return within a day is cut from the anime. Now this is about three dialogue bubbles from the start of chapter 538 which don't make it into the anime. This episode instead cuts to the intro as Ichigo selects one of his Asauchi and Nimaya agrees to personally reforge his Zanpakuto. After the intro song, some dialogue is cut from a pair of Squad 10 Shinigami who are training. As they talk about the state of Squad 10, noting that Captain Hitsugaya has now lost his Bankai, as they conclude that he is finished as a captain. Now this isn't included within the anime as we just see Hitsugaya appear before the sword instructor of Squad 10 as he requests to learn the basics from him. After Hitsugaya arrives, a couple of panels involving the two gossiping Shinigami reacting to his arrival are also also cut from the anime. After we see Kensei and Mashiro training Hisagi, we cut to material from chapter 539 as we catch up with the Soul Society's Research and Development Institute. This is instead of having a scene with Komomura which is rearranged and added on later in the episode in order to streamline his scenes. Now in the Research and Development Institute, we see Akon tune into Mayuri's room and we get some anime only lines that you can hear as Mayuri speaks about giving birth to a new Ashisogi Jizo. Now this is incredible added content that was not present within the manga and I love that they had made this addition here as it's foreshadowing some of his battles later on. Now when we cut to the Omaida family, the entire scene is streamlined within the anime as the gags are cut down between Omaida and his younger sister and we don't even see his brother who is introduced within the manga. In the anime, he agrees to play ball with her but in the manga, his brother arrives offering to read her a Book, but she decides to run away from him. Either way, they leave Omaida alone so that he can think about why Soifon didn't take him with her. After this scene with Soifon, we then cut to the material from the end of chapter 538 where Komomura enters the cave to speak to the elder. But surprisingly, we don't get to see Iba in the anime who is seen to be waiting for his captain outside the cave. Now I said it in my review, but I'll say it again here. I'd really love the exchange between Komomura and the elder. I think that the anime did an incredible job of adapting this from the manga with the tense atmosphere and the very impactful voice acting, it was gripping to watch and it was fascinating to learn more about Komomura's clan who have been exiled to the shadows. Now a couple of comedic panels are cut in the anime from the end of chapter 539 after Ichigo arrives in Nimaya's Hoden Zanpakuto forging cliff. In the manga, he complains about being thrown headfirst down the pipe by Nimaya. Now, the second half of episode 13 focuses entirely on Ichigo Zanpakuto being reforged, as it continues from chapter 540. When the Sword 5 are introduced, we get some anime exclusive scenes where they start to reforge Ichigo Zanpakuto with his Asauchi. Now, in particular, there's a scene involving Nonomi that was not in the manga, which is added within the anime, as she kickstarts the entire reforging process. Now, all of the material involving Ichigo Ichigo's confrontation with Old Man Zangetsu is very faithful to the manga, and I have to admit that it's some of the best adapted material from the first core of the anime, and I love how they had specifically shown the correct flashbacks that correlate to what Old Man Zangetsu was saying, like when his holo had helped him throughout the series. 
The end credits begin to roll as Old Man Zangetsu explains how Ichigo will have his full power awakened, and he will now gain access to his true Zanbakdo. Chapter 542 is adapted into the end credits of episode 13, with crack flashbacks being shown in instances where Ichigo recalls Old Man Zangetsu and his inner hollow, and the instances where Old Man Zangetsu had intervened, lending Ichigo his latent Quincy powers. When Ichigo pulls out two of his new Zanbakdo and it evaporates all of the water, some comments from the Sword 5 and Nimaya are cut. The Sword 5 speak about never having seen anything like this happen before, as well as Nimaya explaining that the sea had dried up from Ichigo's immense spiritual pressure, as the water was used to cool down the soul of Ichigo's Zanbakdo. Now episode 13 wraps up with a brief post credit scene that's taken from the end of chapter 537, where Hashwal brings Udyu to Yuhobak, and we see Udyu in the Sternwitter clothing ready to fight alongside Yuhobak and the Quincy. So this brings us to to the end of the first core of Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. As we reach the end of chapter 542, with episode 1 having started by adapting material from chapter 480, which means that in total, the first part of the Thousand Year Blood War arc has adapted 62 chapters into 13 episodes. After the airing of episode 13, we had a surprise trailer drop which had announced Core 2 would begin airing in July of 2023, which is just 7 months away. The anime staff have promised there to be a lot of additional fight scenes, as well as more content involving Udyu's character being added, so it's definitely going to be a long and excruciating wait until July. What were your thoughts about the finale of the first core that adapts nine and a half chapters worth of content? Personally, I love the script rewrites where Urahara was explaining holification, and I'd really enjoyed seeing the Blade is Me portion being adapted so faithfully from the manga. So for now, this is going to be my last manga vs anime comparison video until July. So let me know what other videos you want me to make in order to fill the space between Core 1 and Core 2. I look forward to reading all of your comments on the finale of the first part of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.